and welcome to the Dairy News and Views podcast, a production of the Iowa State University Extension and Outreach Dairy Team. Our podcast covers current educational, research, and industry tools available to produce the highest quality dairy products efficiently and effectively. Thanks for joining us today on Dairy News and Views from Iowa State University Dairy Team. I'm Fred Hall, Northwest Iowa Dairy Field Specialist, along with Jen Bentley, Northeast Iowa Dairy Field Specialist. Today's topic, we'll take a look at some guidelines for workforce contingency planning in the COVID-19 setting. We're visiting with Melissa O'Rourke, attorney and farm agribusiness field specialist with Iowa State University. She's also a member of our Extension Dairy Team. Thanks for being with us today, Melissa. Well, thanks, Fred. It's good to be with you and with Jen. You recently authored a publication called Five Steps to Formulate Workforce Contingency Plans in the COVID-19 Setting and it can be found on our Ag Decision Maker website. Why don't you give us a little background on how you decided to put together these guidelines? Sure, Fred, I'm happy to do that. As we all know, in our region, it was mid to late March when folks started to think seriously about how this pandemic could directly impact our farms and our rural businesses. Over the years, I've done a lot of work in human resource management issues, so these questions came to mind for me. Things like, what happens if workers get sick or have to be quarantined? How should we think about our farms and food processors and service providers and and the kinds of issues that they need to be thinking about. Many of us were undergoing changes in our work lives. That got me thinking about this process, including for our dairy producers. And I guess I'll mention the other particular experience that got me thinking about this. It goes back to 2015, the avian influenza epidemic. Here in Iowa, we had many poultry and egg producers, and this included turkey and chicken growers, egg layer operations, and so on, all all of those that were impacted by that kind of an emergency situation. So at that time, I spent a number of weeks with those producers going through a framework of how to adjust to those impacts and make plans for the future. I saw some similarities when we were coming into this COVID-19 pandemic situation, and realized, again, that in any emergency situation, it helps for people to have a framework, some kind of a logical model for making plans and for thinking about the what-if situations that come up. That's true. We always encourage our dairy producers to have backup plans. That's right, Fred. Uh, We know that our smart dairy producers try to have backup plans for if members of their workforce become unavailable. But in this COVID-19 environment, there are some additional considerations. And I should mention, I I got a couple phone calls asking me what resources we had at Iowa State University Extension. So that made me start to outline a multi-step process for thinking about workforce contingency plans. On many farms, as you know, all the labor is performed by family members, while other farms have a few non-family employees, perhaps on a seasonal basis during planting and harvest operations. Now, more livestock operations operations, like our dairies, tend to have more significant year-round labor requirements. Uh, We have cow and here in our region, goat dairies, some sheep dairies, and no matter what, everyone needs to be milked, fed, watered, and otherwise cared for no matter what the situation. So Melissa, why don't we start looking at these steps? What would be your first suggestion for our producers? Where should they start thinking about this? Sure, Jen. The The first most logical step is to protect the current workforce. As we are recording this today, we're seeing states starting to, you know, in quote, open up and lessen restrictions in terms of social distancing and things like that. But in agriculture, we know the importance all the time of biosecurity and how things can spread. So it's important for us to maintain vigilance in regard to our workforces, maintain those best practices on the farm and rural workplace. What would be a few pointers to protect our current workers right now? The first, Jen, as I mentioned, is social distancing. So 
do whatever you can to rearrange work duties, workstations, so that you can maintain that minimum six foot distance between and among workers whenever possible. And again, in the dairy situation, sometimes we have people working shoulder to shoulder, uh, crossing each other's paths frequently. So we just need to think about what is our workflow and how can we spread apart. So within social distancing, that context, we also want to maintain attention to hand washing, sanitizers, and overall sanitation. Now more than ever, biosecurity on the farm is of the utmost importance. Hand sanitizers are good, but we love hand washing with soap and hot water. And of course, to regularly sanitize any services that are touched by others. So we, we talked about social distancing. What about personal protective equipment? That's right, Jen. Personal protective equipment, or what we now call PPE, that should be provided. Now, this, of course, includes masks or face shields, uh, may include disposable gloves in some situations. In other situations, garments might be uh, appropriate. Uh, they might be disposable or washable garments. And Melissa, what about health screening of our workers? Jen, you know, we have a culture in our society of thinking that if we feel a little achy, or we have the sniffles, we should just kind of try to power through and go to work. Nowadays, we want to think differently. Instead, we want to be telling our employees that if they don't feel well, they should stay home. If they are already at work and developing symptoms, tell those current employees. If you're developing a cough or shortness of breath, you should notify a supervisor and go home. Depending on your workplace, you might want to do temperature screenings. You might want to ask some of those health questions on arrival about how they are feeling, if they've had any of these symptoms. You should also have a policy that if your workers feel well, but they have a sick household member, they should notify their supervisor and after that make decisions about what they should do. So Melissa, overall, I'm hearing you saying as kind of a summary message, do whatever you can to protect your current workforce. What would be the next thing to think about? All right. In walking through this framework, Jen, of the contingency planning, the second thing you should consider is how you are preparing the current workforce. And that would be by means of cross-training and standard operating procedures, or what we call SOPs. Those are always important concepts on the dairy, right? You're right about that, Fred. Uh, cross-training and job rotation is always good policy under what we might now call normal conditions. And I like to point out the importance of this, even where the entire workforce is family-based. And in fact, it might be even more essential in that situation. In the smaller or entirely family-based dairy, the absence of just one key person can throw the workforce into chaos. So it's extra important that everyone knows what it takes to get everything done. And a key part of that is the SOPs. Talk about standard operating procedures or SOPs, as we often call them, for a minute. Sure. Happy to do that, Fred. Well-written and accessible SOP documents are always important on the dairy and in all kinds of farms and rural businesses. You need straightforward, step-by-step -step descriptions of key tasks, including a list of supplies and tools required. The best way to write an SOP is to assume that an individual who is entirely unfamiliar with the tasks might need to read and follow the guidelines. So you use language that is easy to understand, leave out technical jargon, and make those SOPs accessible to everyone. They can be in a three-ring binder, well-marked on a, on a shelf, or posted on the wall, or you can do both. And you like the idea of video SOPs too, right? That's right, Fred. Short videos can supplement the written SOPs. And it's easy for any of us nowadays to use a digital camera or a cell phone. Keep it short. It's kind of like uh, the concept of a picture captures a thousand words. And in that document that uh, people can get on Ag Decision Maker, there is a link to a two-minute video showing how easy and helpful having video SOPs can be. That sounds great. 
So what's next? All right, we move on to step three. Step three is to design or update the workforce contingency plan. So whatever the regular workforce is, now is the time to assume that plan A might collapse. So you need to devise plan B uh, as a plan to backfill or, or back up those labor needs and be ready with plan C on deck as well. Again, many of our dairy operations, as you know, Fred, already have a labor contingency plan. Dairy producers know that they need to anticipate situations which may impact the availability of the workforce. Most dairies have some kind of fill-in or backup workers who provide labor on weekends or an as-needed basis. So those workers are already at least somewhat trained. Now is the time before you have an emergency to bring in those substitute workers for skill refreshment, for retraining, walking them through what's going on on the farm. Make those individuals aware that they are part of the farm's contingency labor plan. Review the plans that you have in place for contacting workers who need to come in to relieve and substitute for the regular workforce. And this might be something as simple as an old fashioned telephone tree. Uh, some of us remember that where you have a list of people, maybe a couple different lists, and you always know that when you get the call, you call the next person on the list and so on. Uh, then you make sure everybody has those contacts in their cell phone and maybe download a copy of that telephone tree onto their cell phones so that they have it with them. So that communication to those backup workers and what your plan is for that is very important. So what if there isn't a good supply of backup workers? Well, that takes us to step four, Fred, and that is recruit and train new contingency workers. We know that many dairies and other rural farm businesses, farms, have long faced challenges in locating enough workers. But the good thing maybe in this COVID-19 environment is that we might have access to some workers that aren't usually available. College and high school students are home. They're not in school. They might be available for part-time or occasional employment. Uh, some of these students might not have the same traditional summer employment opportunities. Uh, so they could, for that reason, be available for work on the farm. We're hearing, for example, about community swimming pools that aren't going to open up this summer. Well, some of those people are gonna be looking for a job. So, so those are folks to think about. Other people out there have been laid off from their usual jobs and they are available to work. So these are all possibilities that we might have now in the COVID-19 setting that we might not have otherwise. Melissa, can you recommend some resources and ideas for hiring farm workers? We do have some resources. Uh, one is guidance for applicant recruitment. It's found in another ag decision maker article that's entitled get the right start in hiring employees and again you can find that on our ag decision maker website uh, always remember that the best source for new employees is your current employees they are the ones who know the work environment they know the types of skills necessary so they are apt to recommend people who they think could do this work and people that they would personally know might be available. And then don't forget social media, local online job boards, state employment sites. Uh, in Iowa, that would be something like workforce development, but every state has a, a state workforce development agency of some kind. So those are all places to think about. And Melissa, you know, we don't like to think about it, but what if the worst does happen? Let's say you do have an outbreak on the farm and you're short of workers. Well, Jen, that takes us to step five, and that is prepare to function with a reduced workforce. And it just is good sense now to be ready for the possibility that your farm may be in a situation of not enough workers. So now is the time to think about it and prioritize the most essential tasks and critical workers, which on the dairy is probably milking and providing nutrition. Identify other tasks 
that could be considered for a reduced schedule. There might be things that you do on a daily basis and you could do it every other day or uh, once a week instead. Just you, you have to think about those things now. As I indicated earlier, then you also should think about that situation where an owner, a manager, another key leader becomes ill or needs to self-quarantine. And now is the time to be preparing mid-level workers to assume management responsibilities. Buy any tools for remote communication in that situation. Uh, make sure those people that have to assume leadership and management have some written guidelines, share it, posted in key locations. Sounds like those five steps could be useful anytime, but especially need to be in place before they're needed. What about other resources that can help producers be prepared? Well, I'll again share that this, this article, and uh, you know, it's entitled Five Steps to Formulate Workforce Contingency Plans in the COVID-19 Setting. It's available on Ag Decision Maker. It's easy to find Ag Decision Maker. Uh, you can just Google Ag Decision Maker. It'll always be the first link that comes up. And then if you get to the Ag Decision Maker website, there's a search box there and uh, you'll be able to find it. And, and then the article itself, in terms of additional resources, the, the back page of the article has links to some other resources, things from the CDC guidelines. There are links to templates on how to write SOPs and more. There, for example, is a publication from the National Milk Producers Federation on recommended protocols for dairy farms where an employee tests positive for COVID-19. Uh, a number of other links and resources, and I certainly would commend uh, going to the Iowa State University Dairy Extension Team website as well. And you'll find uh, good tabs and good links there for many resources that'll be helpful to our, our dairy producers and support services in this situation. Melissa and Jan, I want to thank you both for being on the show here today. We've talked about preparing the business in the advent of COVID-19 situation on a dairy and mentioned resources that are available through Iowa State University Extension. As we mentioned, there are additional resources available at the Extension Dairy Team website, or you can contact Melissa directly at her office in Decorah, and that number is 563-382-2949. Thanks for joining us today, and we look forward to visiting with you on the next Dairy News and Views from ISU. This institution is an equal opportunity provider. For the full non-discrimination statement or combination inquiries, go to www.extension.iastate.edu backslash diversity backslash ext.